The overhead press feels like what we all wish the bench press was. You're standing on your own two feet, so it's more analogous to the squat and deadlift. It's a monster upper body developer. It's a very meaningful test of strength, and it's extremely entertaining to watch. It's like all of the things you told yourself about your dad before he left for the gallon of milk and never came back. And now you're stuck with your boring old slog of a stepfather, the bench press. As somebody who knows a thing or two about overhead pressing, it was one of my best events when I was in my competitive heyday, and I used overhead pressing both as a means of building larger shoulders and also as a way of hoisting big poundages overhead. So I wanted to use that experience and talk about what I think of the overhead press in that capacity, the six reasons I think it is absolutely goaded as a movement, and how you might incorporate it in your training to get the most out of it depending on your goals. Reason number one, it grows you. Just flat out the overhead press with a barbell is a fantastic upper body developer. Is it the end all be all for hypertrophy? Absolutely not. But if you're finding the intersection of effective training stimulus and minimal time and effort, that point is represented by the thing that gives you the most bang for the buck, just like the squat for the lower body. It doesn't take a lot of sets. It doesn't take just infinitely long sessions. You can get in, get a staple amount of work. And as long as you are focused on progressing weight over time, you can be sure that your strength will go up and your size will go up, your shoulders will get bigger. So when in doubt, when you're limited on equipment, limited on time, you just have to ask yourself, if I add 30, 40 pounds on my ability to press weight over my head, will my shoulders be bigger? For just about everybody, for all novices, for just about all intermediates, the answer is going to be yes. It's a compound movement. It puts you through a wide range of motion. It's versatile. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it to induce hypertrophy. But the bottom line is there are very few exercises for your upper body that have such a one-to-one -one correlation. So improving your overhead press, a very good, very easy proxy for getting size and getting strength in your upper body. Reason number two, I love it. It is scalable and versatile. So in talking about it as a means of building bigger shoulders, it's important to know how you can tweak it and change it to suit your needs. If you are very hypertrophy oriented, it's going to be in your best interest to use a variety of tactics. So if you have a lot of time and access to equipment, you'll use dumbbells and cables and various movements to get the job done. But if you are limited to a barbell, you can play with the grip. You can go wider or narrower. You can go in front of your face or behind the neck. You can do partial ranges of motion. When you look at a lot of exercises that get recommended for their strength and size benefits, some of them that are really good exercises aren't quite as easy to get into. They're not as accessible. When you look at like body weight calisthenic type movements, if you're a little bit heavy, but you're not quite as strong yet, things like dips, which are a fantastic exercise, they might be a little harder to get into. So having something that starts at the weight of an empty barbell and can be scaled in two and a half pound increments all the way up and you can micro load, you can make very small adjustments, you can incorporate different types of loading. There's a ton of options you can do to move the overhead press forward. And for just about everybody, except the most advanced and specialized lifters, you can be sure that every pound you increase your overhead press by is going to correlate to meaningful strength and meaningful improvements in muscularity. Reason number three, there are just tons of carryover to other activities. Getting strong in the bench press generally is a good sign that your upper body's strong, but one of the holes in it is that it was the default upper body test of strength, but it doesn't have a ton of direct carryover to other upper body type movements. A perfect example is in the NFL combine. Not only do they use a bench press, but they use a very light bench press for high reps. Now, all things being equal, the person who has a higher bench press is very likely to be better at pushing and shoving and hitting and so on. But because of the specific nature of a bench press being pinned against a bench, being very stable, not standing on your own two feet and pushing in this direct plane away from your body, it's not as good of an indicator of how you're going to do on the field. Whereas if you have something like a shot putter, something like a box, or a fighter, if you have a football player who is going to be more bent over into an inclined position as they push, an overhead press tends to say things about the lifter that a bench press just doesn't. And I've heard it repeated by strength coaches in the past. They'd rather have an athlete who can strict press 250 than bench press 400 if you had to choose between the two. As somebody who comes from a strongman background, I could absolutely see the improvements in my overhead press carry over to all of the other things, especially strict pressing. There's a lot of athletes that jerk, and I found that by increasing my push press and my strict press, I was able to more easily handle odd object presses, dumbbell presses, log presses, and so on. So its usefulness for other types of athletes and for other types of strength movements is really unparalleled. It's a great movement. 
I have to take a brief pause to thank this channel sponsor, Barbell Apparel. Barbell Apparel puts out high quality clothing that meets the performance needs of athletes and lifters alike while comfortably fitting the athletic body the way that other clothing brands simply do not. I'm a big fan of the ultralight joggers, abrasion resistant, moisture wicking, and insanely comfortable. If you don't wanna be mosquito food, pants are not optional during the Texas summer, and these keep me covered but cool so I can keep pushing as the temperatures rise. As always, Barbell Apparel Clothing boasts a no questions asked 365 day guarantee. If anything happens to your clothing, they will help you repair or replace. Thank you again to Barbell Apparel. This channel exists because of sponsors like them. Reason number four, it makes your bench press go up. Now this is kind of tied into the last point about strength carryover, but it's really important to know that a lot of people that spend so much time benching to get their bench up, which is a very good and viable way to improve your bench press, will end up lagging on their front delt development. So while the bench press does tax the front delts heavily, it's not enough to grow them specifically. And that's true with a lot of muscle groups involved in the bench. Your rear delts, your biceps, your lats, all required for a big bench, but benching by itself isn't really gonna do a lot to grow those muscles. And that's one of the reasons why you'll see some really, really impressive benchers who have overhead presses that kind of lag behind, where you have somebody like Jeremy Hornster who has like a 675 bench. And I think the most I've seen in military press is uh, seated, something on the order of 405, where you have a strong man like Jesse Nelson, who really only focuses on overhead pressing and can do a 410 or 415 standing strict press, and his bench is something on the order of 550. Now, given how little bench pressing strong men do, you have to understand that the strength they have is almost a direct byproduct, or it tends to be a direct byproduct of the overhead pressing. Now, if you are a bench specialist, this is a bit of a different story. I talked to Sam Sheether about this directly. He is an extremely strong bencher, something on the order of benching the mid to high fives. And his take was that the front delt really helps him get the bar back over his face when he's pressing that curve but he felt that that stopped giving returns up to a point. So for the most advanced specialized pressers, you're probably going to find that more bench specific work is warranted to keep that train running forward. But for just about everybody who's been benching, 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 and has gotten a little bit stale in how that's been going along, take honest inventory and how strong your shoulders are, how much time you've spent doing delt specific work, and ask yourself if you have room to get some quick and dirty gains on your strict pressing, because I guarantee for just about everybody that is going to directly carry over to your bench pressing ability. Reason number five, and this is purely anecdotal, but it seems to be less problematic as far as injury rates than benching. Now, the reason I say that is because I've been competing in strongman for a long time. We do some crazy stuff. You're seeing log presses get over 500 pounds. You're seeing circus dumbbell presses getting over 300 pounds. I mean, the weights are getting done. Even in the middleweight division, there's some crazy weights being lifted. I am not aware of a lot of guys that have really had uh, shoulder problems pop up on a frequent basis from all the overhead pressing we do. Whereas benching seems to be more injurious in uh, competitive circles, you'll see uh, pec tears, sprains, ruptures. You'll see all kinds of problems with the pec and with the shoulder. I know guys, as they try to up bench frequency, will experience a lot of chronic problems in their shoulders. It doesn't seem to be so much the case with the overhead press. Now, I don't know if that's because it is uh, a lighter movement because you're standing on your own two feet, so you're not as braced. You can't handle quite as much load because it's a little bit less stable. I don't know if it's because smaller muscle groups are being used. You can't bring the bigger muscles of the pecs into it. So it might be a load issue. It might be a stability issue. All I know is that in my years competing, I haven't seen nearly uh, the amount of issues arise. That's not to say that they won't. Uh, tweaks, sprains, little issues. You might get impingement. You might get bursitis. Me personally, I went through four months of no overhead pressing. My shoulders hurt way more than they ever have before. I started overhead pressing. The pain is gone now. I mean, when I wasn't doing the thing that I thought was causing my shoulder pain, I couldn't reach up to get a mug out of the cupboard. Two weeks back into the swing of things of overhead pressing, the pain's almost gone. I've heard that from other people. So that's a, a little bit of voodoo right there. That's not a hard, fast rule. It's just a little bit of anecdote. But any movement where you can feel pretty secure in pushing the envelope uh, without the likelihood of something going sideways, even if it's just your perception that you're less likely to get injured, you're likely to take it farther, take it a little more seriously. So that is absolutely a big win. Thing number six, 
it's fucking fun to do. And this is probably the most important thing. You would think this is the least relevant, but I actually put this as one of the most relevant things because the thing that you are going to get best at is the thing you love to do. Now, if you are just driven by the idea of building the 3D delts that are just as big, as detailed, as well-rounded as possible, you probably love the idea of doing four, five, six different exercises throughout the week to hit all those odds and ends. You probably like all the different rep ranges. You probably like those modes of progression that are associated with bodybuilding type movement. And if that's you, that's fantastic. For other people that have goals that are a kind of blend of size and strength, for those of you that really like fixating on lifts, that like sinking your teeth into a movement that you can chip away and get better at, this is absolutely one of the best ones to do. It's fun to test PRs. It's fun to push yourself uh, in different modes if you've been strict pressing for a long time and you've never push press. It's fun to chase those push press numbers. And in competition, it's absolutely fun to watch people overhead press, strongman, log pressing, dumbbell pressing, even axle pressing, which is basically just a barbell with extra steps is so much more entertaining than something like bench pressing. So once you start to, to sink your teeth into these, you start to go crazy chipping away at these feats of strength. It just adds so much to your training because you're excited about it. You look forward to it. You want to demonstrate that strength more. And if you take that and extrapolate it out over time, all those little wins, all those little bits of extra effort are going to be fleshed out into more gains, more progress than you otherwise would have if you just tried to force yourself to do something you're not that into. So that sounds like it's less important, but please believe me when I say how, how passionate you are, how much you like to do certain things, that can actually be so beneficial that it can trump the fact that you're doing something that's not quite as optimal. But as we've covered, the overhead press is still just a fantastic exercise. So take from this what you will. I'm a huge fan of it. It's one of the reasons I've excelled at it so much. So let me know in the comments section what you think. What's your favorite version of it? Have you been neglecting it for years and now you have tiny little pea shoulders that you need to fix? Or is it a staple exercise? How has it helped your other lifts? Let us know in the comments or take it to Patreon. That's where I upload my training weekly. And that is also where I answer questions. I give life advice, form checks, any way you want to get in contact with me, that is the best way to do it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Till next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.